Well, I, I, I love the premise of that question because it, it acknowledges that uh, we're not just meeting and, and addressing the problems that are right in front of us, that we're being proactive, that we're thinking about tomorrow. Um, and, and I think one of the things that's so frequent in leaders is that they are triaging problems and therefore they only address the problems that are directly in front of them. So often we, say, we hear people say, oh, I don't have any trans employees, so I don't really need to address trans issues. Uh, but to really truly build a safe workplace, a workplace that, needs, that meets the needs of all employees, you have to address those needs before they arise. Um, and so that requires uh, making sure that you are adopting those policies ahead of time. It, me it, makes, it means making sure that you're setting out very clearly the values of your workplace. I also think what we're seeing increasingly is that businesses understand more and more that they need to create safe places for their workers, not just from the nine to five workday, but also outside. Uh, so we've seen businesses increasingly step up on, for instance, LGBTQ equality uh, to make sure that there are comprehensive non-discrimination protections, to make sure that when states like North Carolina pass anti-LGBTQ legislation, that they understand that businesses aren't going to locate there because if they want to make sure that they have those that diverse workforce, uh, they need to make sure that the communities that those workers are living in are safe as well. That's a good point. What about you guys? What do you think you can be doing today to make the workplace of the future better? Well, the first thing I would say is that for most companies, most businesses, the scarcest resource is talent. There's a war for talent out there. And for any business to actively exclude itself from having the best and most capable talent means that their business can't succeed. So the combination of a competitive work environment and a competitive talent environment, I think, is an essential ingredient in our society for creating the conditions that says every company to succeed needs to be inclusive. The other thing I would say is that as we use more automation in the workplace, we're taking a lot of the manual, non-creative work out of the workplace, and we're creating much more space for diverse creativity. And that, in and of itself, I think, will be a further catalyst for driving a broader set of change inside the workplace. So the harsh reality is, if we're not inclusive in the workplace, we won't exist in a few years' time. It's as simple as that. Exactly. Michelle? And really, I think, to build off of that, it's, it's just good for business. This is not a cosmetic situation where it's just nice to have. This is actually beneficial to corporations. There are studies that are out that, you know, in a study of about 400 companies, the top 25% of those companies who had scored high in racial and ethnic diversity performed 30% better. You know, and with women having those same sort of in that same percentile, they performed 18% better. So this is better for your bottom line. But it's also just a general, I think, also to build off of what both of these people, or both Sarah and Ronan are saying, is that we really do need to diversify the pool that we have. It is not about just about looks. It's about how they live their lives and bringing those perspectives to the table. That way, again, our products, our companies, our corporations are a real reflection of the community that they live in. Well, and I, and I just want to build off that point because I think what you just said about the studies that demonstrate the, the practical outcomes yeah. for businesses. You'll make money. Right. This I is think, a good thing. I think it's so important. And I think one of the things people don't realize is that for so many people in this country, they don't presently feel safe and able to bring their whole selves to work. Right. And when you can't bring your whole self to work, then you're not going to be feel safe being as creative as you can be. You're not going to feel safe bringing up the new idea. And so we know that when, whether you're Muslim, LGBTQ, person of color, an immigrant, a woman, when you feel comfortable bringing your whole self to work, when you feel comfortable sharing your whole self with your colleagues, it results in, in better teamwork, more loyalty to the business. It results in better uh, productivity. And as you said, that is good. And as you said, it's good for the bottom line. Again, more money.